My name is Fabio Arposelli, and I'm a staff engineer with the Cloud Native Applications Business Unit here at VMware. Today, I'm here to talk about myths and truths about containers and VMs. And I'm going to talk about three major misconceptions or wrong assumptions that are considered when comparing virtual machines and containers. Specifically, I'm going to talk about size, isolation or security, and boot time. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to compare virtual machines and containers running on Linux. Let's start with size. As you may know, containers and VM can be complementary, as containers can run inside virtual machines. In a virtual machine, everything but the hardware is comprised inside the disk image that makes up the virtual machine. Meaning that inside the disk image, we have the kernel, the init system, the user space programs, and the application themselves. This, depending on the size of the user space and the application, can range from hundreds of megabytes to tens of gigabytes. In a container, depending on the type of the application we have inside it, the size can range from tens of megabytes up to gigabytes. And that's very depending on the type of the, type of the application inside it because the container has the application and all the dependencies that that application requires to run. If we take an example of a Golang application, meaning a, um, an application written in Go programming language, the Go programming language lends itself very well to being containerized because the resulting application is usually a static binary, meaning that it has no dependency from the operating system required to run, meaning that what's inside the container is exclusively the process that is being run. But if the application is either a traditional application, a replatform, or an application that has, uh, that requires user space tools to run, what we usually do is we create a container based on a base container that contains all the user space from a specific Linux distribution. And one of the most well-known example, we have um, applications that are created starting from a Ubuntu base container. And the Ubuntu base container that only contains the package manager and a few other user space tools weighs at least 100, 120 megabytes just for the base image. And that has to include the application and other things as well. So if we have applications that lend themselves very well at being containerized, like Golang applications, we might have containers that are very small in size, even in the single digits, digits of megabytes. If we have traditional application, we might end up with containers that are as big as virtual machines, disk images. Now let's talk about isolation or security. In a VM, the process of isolation is very straightforward because what we have is we have boundaries that are created outside the x86 platform, meaning that every process included in the kernel, the init system, and even the BIOS or the EFI subsystem are running inside a sandbox, the one you see here. So escaping from this x86 sandbox is extremely difficult because an attacker has to attack the process of the application and then try to escape not only the kernel, but also the x86 um, boundary. This is con considered extremely difficult. As far as we know, there hasn't been any successful attack of this type to virtual machines yet. Containers, on the other hand, are by no means insecure, but they are as secure as the kernel they're running on. Meaning that if an attacker attacks a process running inside a container and the kernel has a security bug 
here, the user attacking this process can potentially escape the sandbox and reach the kernel, leaving the machine vulnerable. Now this is considered very difficult because kernel bugs of this type are very rare. It happened in the past that these kind, of these kind of bugs were uh, discovered by the security community. And the popularity of containers make the security community well aware of these type of bugs, meaning that the security posture of the kernel is scrutinized very closely by that community. And last but not least, let's talk about boot times. In a VM, we have several startup times that add up to this, the startup time of the application itself. The startup times are, can be divided in two sections. One is the system check section that includes the x86 post, the EFI or boot uh, check, the kernel boot, and the init startup and then the process run. The initial part that we can call system check that includes the x86 post, the BIOS or EFI check, the kernel startup, and the init startup usually takes around three to four seconds. While the startup of the process itself takes about 500 milliseconds. The startup time of the system can be improved by using EFI instead of BIOS and by using modern init system like systemd that starts up services in parallel instead of sequentially. This can shave off seconds from the startup time of the system and can bring the startup time of a VM closer to what the startup of a container is. In a container, what happens is we run the process and we have to set up the sandbox. So the sandbox is a kernel operation that takes no time while the startup of the process, just like in the VM, takes about 500 milliseconds meaning that the startup time of a container is extremely fast and extremely straightforward because the only two operations made are one is a kernel operation which is setting up the process sandbox and the other one is starting up the application itself. I hope you found this, um, this video useful. Uh, please check out the um, GitHub page of uh, the VMware Cloud Native Business Unit and thanks for watching.